The idea of a game's premise asking to solve your own murder can be a fantastic concept. So when I saw developer Genuine had those themes in their newest title, Fateful End, True Case Files, I was pretty excited. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking straight. Important pieces are missing in this title that makes it not work, such as the character needs to actually be dead or for their death to be faked. Fateful End doesn't capitalize on the theme it's going for, which causes the entire experience to be disingenuous. Fateful End True Case Files is a puzzle adventure with the elements of a true crime story. Our protagonist Jean can't catch a break after he wakes up in a box in a shed, escapes, and as he attempts to flee is then chased down and captured before being put back in the box. However, this time the box is then covered in cement and he's dumped in the sea. Great start. We then cut to some time before this event, as Zhang is breaking into his girlfriend's workplace to use her computer so he can forge some documents. In the middle of this, he receives a phone call from a former associate who originally cut and run with about $10,000 from their former job. And he says he wants Zhang's help with a scheme he has cooked up to make a lot of money. As you would expect, this is very suspicious, so Zhang may not want to sign up immediately. However, it seems one of the former associate's new collaborators may be able to get Zhang. How will he survive? I wish he didn't, cause wow. Zhang is one of the worst protagonists in an adventure game I have had the displeasure of being in the viewpoint of. He is a shady man whose introductory scene sets him up as a legal importer of some sort. Actually, the story isn't really clear on what he does, except for the fact that it's not legal and it's better if his girlfriend takes the fall if he gets caught. He also does strange things like buying DVDs and resealing them so he can return them after watching. He also takes this incel approach when addressing any female character, of which there are two, with constant responses along the lines of, ugh, women. The title forces you to have an affair, like this is some terrible soap opera. And then the writers want us to care about him. We know they do because there's a whole chapter dedicated to him having a nightmare because the situation he's in is so stressful. We should totally sympathize with him. In contrast, I wanted him to get to the part where he just dies, which doesn't happen. Visually, the game is rather interesting. It's got a unique art style and I quite like the designs for several characters. The backgrounds don't really mesh with the characters that much, but I, I still think they look good. Sadly, the puzzles they're in don't use the environments well, and it's not clear what can and can't be clicked on, so you just kind of click around wildly hoping to get things. There is a light bulb function that gives you hints and the answers to early puzzles to circumvent this. Sometimes though, it just doesn't work, and other times the order in which you have to do things is a complete mess. This can almost be justified as like those old Sierra adventure games with their whole so bad and it's good approach, but some puzzles towards the end seem like they had next to no QA testing. These late game puzzles can lock you into situations that force you to save scum, such as preventing you from leaving menus until you use an item you may not have grabbed, or merging two items accidentally, resulting in a game over. Aside from Fateful End attempting to jump scare you with sudden loud noises, nothing happens within these puzzles either. The elements appear to be padding on the adventure rather than anything else. The concept of discovering your own killer is also terribly executed. When you reach the part where you catch up with the opening, you A. Don't care, and then are told who did it immediately afterwards. Any reveals the game has that may have sounded good on paper are executed in-game with the tact of a man driving a car with the horn stuck blaring who keeps forgetting which pedal does what. What twists Fateful End tries to bank on are said to you and add nothing to the overall depth aside from adding more length to the story. The choices do nothing but mark sudden game overs, there's a relationship tree you can access from the menu that does absolutely nothing, and speaking of the menu, the click and drag log is extremely slow and doesn't record much text, you only have sound options, and the game is locked to full screen. At least the drop down menu looks somewhat cool? Fateful End True Case Files is a nonsensical title with nothing to do with what the game is about. It's rarely fun with a couple of neat puzzles, still they often clash so terribly with the terrible attempt at telling an interesting story through force from character development, nothing ever pays off. Apparently there are plans for a sequel too because the ending is rather open ended. 
While it was nice to take a breather and play through a game I hadn't quite known about, Fateful End has nothing going for it. Unless you want to support an indie Chinese developer, in which case, go nuts. Noisy Pixel is giving Fateful End True Case Files a 4 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching Noisy Pixels and Crypt Eddie to bring you guys the best news, reviews, previews, and more. Please stick around and look at our reviews for other better adventure mystery puzzle games. We've got a lot.